Well, Tony, man, I'm excited to, to see you, excited to talk to you. It feels like I haven't, uh, we haven't heard much from you for about the last year. Was that intentional? Did you kind of want to take a little break from everybody? You didn't deserve to talk to me. <laughs> and why is that? Hold on, brother, I'm talking. <laughs> did, you, did you want some privacy? Did you feel like you needed some time uh, like, like over the last Absolutely year? Absolutely not, man. You guys have two main events already, so, I mean, you don't really need to hear from me that much, right? No, I we like it. to be off the poster, and you guys did that, so it was awesome. You guys are listening. You're not, you're not on the I haven't actually haven't seen the poster. You're not on it? No. This is that, is good. I have too many of those. Yeah? Does that rub you the wrong way, though? You feel like, like Absolutely you deserve not. it to be on Absolutely there? not. What I think is, you know what, if, if my value is here, I should be paid for my value. I believe I'm underpaid. I believe that I should have insurance. I, there's a lot of things that I believe. I'm going to be real. So um, the retaliation tactics that I've been put underneath from this company for a long time had made me realize that I was putting myself out there too far. So instead of doing that, what I wanted to do was just kind of focus on what I really needed to do, which was practice. Do what I needed to do inside the practice room, and it's going to show come Saturday night at UFC 274 here at the Footprint Center. Do you feel like, like some of those frustrations were impacting your performances, that maybe that is, is what's to speak of some of these performances? Well, I don't speak it? for everybody, but I know everybody's thinking it. And the retaliation tactics that this company has done for a lot of people, what it does is it has a trickle effect on families. It has a trickle effect on everything else. But I'm not sure what they, somebody did to them because obviously that's what happened and then it just kind of trickled down to everybody else. But it used to get to me. But that was because I wasn't practicing right. That's because I wasn't focusing right. I was focusing on the wrong things. This is what I'm here for. I'm here to fight. I'm here to compete. I'm here to win. I'm here to do this in stylistic fashion, which is my own way, which is either through a knockout or through a submission. I'm not a late starter. You know, I'm not going to be in the same place as what Michael Chandler says. You know, I'm not going to be in two places at once. It's not me. It's only one person that can do that. But I will be moving inside that octagon. And come Saturday night, I will have my hand raised in victory. I think it's exciting, man, that you're talking about being in a good frame of mind coming into this fight. Is, that, is it difficult, though? Like when you get into a hotel and you do feel like this employer, you're, you're unhappy Absolutely with some not. of the things no, that no, 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 I'm not unhappy. More than anything else, what I am is just concerned. Concerned about a lot of other things. You know, the things that they should be concerned about. You know, uh, Dana said something the other day where he said that boxers are overpaid. You know, I'm not going to say stay in your lane, but, man, that guy's overpaid, too. As far as the fighters, I mean, I asked, what, to fight, Com uh, not, was it not Kamzat, at Magomedov over in Abu Dhabi. I said, give me a couple hours. They made it seem like I didn't want the fight. They said, boom, you know what I mean? And afterwards, they wanted to make me wait for a fight for a while. And then they started to sign contracts, right? They wanted to send me a contract that said an extension on my contract because they couldn't find me an opponent. Oh, we didn't read it. We just signed it. So you guys are signing things without reading them. The other day I was over here trying to read one of my contracts, right? And then the lady was kind of fast forwarding me through the thing. I was like, hold on, let me read. I'm used to that since the Ultimate Fighter. So I'm going to be real. The tactics are there. I'm not here to like moan. I'm here to get the job done, man. My weight is good. I feel strong. My mental is very, very strong. My people have my back. Not just my corners, not, uh, nothing for them, but from anything else, you know, just being putting myself in faith, family, and friends. And uh, I owe it to them, not anybody else. Well, just so that there's no confusion and there's no misdirection of anything or, or they're putting out something that's not true, what does Tony Ferguson want right now? What is Tony Ferguson's goals? What are you looking forward to, to accomplish and get done, you know, in this fight and then immediately moving forward? Everybody always wants to know that end goal. And the funny thing is, is I'm not going to tell it because that's a little bit of privacy that I have. And that's pretty much it. I liked your post on, on Instagram about driving over here. Do you usually drive to your fights? Do you, like, you drive to them in Vegas? Not really. You know what I do is I'm, I'm, just, a, you know, I'm just a messenger. So when it comes down to it, I have a lot of time to think and a lot of time to converse with my people and be able to uh, make sure that the job's going to get done come Saturday night. How was that, just sitting in your car? You posted the sunset, and you said like, it cleanses the palate. What were you thinking about with the window down driving to a UFC fight in Phoenix? Oh, it was great. I um, love to drive. You know, I'm from Michigan, so it's a com completely different area. When you're in the city, uh, everything can get uh, fast if you allow it to. But when you slow things down enough, it's like how you can slow things down, like in the Matrix, you know, when Neo went, when everything just slowed down. Well, I've been practicing enough where I've been in enough athletic events and, and at the highest level where that one second can turn into like 10, 20 seconds. And I'm at that point right now in my life, and uh, everybody thinks that, well, before I would probably be concerned about what everybody thinks, but right now I don't give a So come Saturday night at UFC 274, uh, myself and Chandler, we're going to be out there and we're going to ollie you up the co-main and the main event. So hopefully you guys have a nice time. Make sure you buy it. Don't stream that. We'll find you. <laughs> what, do, what do you think about uh, Michael Chandler? I mean, when he came in from Bellator, it kind of felt like 
some of and I feel I feel like you kind of had the same impression too. Like you need to earn your your stripes a little bit. Like what what you did. I don't need to earn any stripes. No, not you. You felt like Matt kind of he needed to. Like like what he had done in Bellator did not translate necessarily to the UFC. What have you made of his performances so far in the UFC? Well, like I said about the retaliation tactics, there's only so many times I can fight for an interim belt. You know what I mean? I don't want to have to talk about the Miller Ayala act and Conor McGregor being an uh, an agent and working for me, right? And then being able to be in the same boat where I was competing. There was a lot of illegal going on. And everybody knew about it. I remember when Dana said, you know, those guys are over. So I'm like, hey, you knew? So you had that prior information and you just kind of let it go then too, didn't you? That makes me feel really good. So come to that, I had to let it go. And there's one battle at a time. So I have, I have a nice, nice, nice guy that uh, served in the war and he's looking after me. And uh, I have to say that uh, thank you very much because it's one battle at a time. It's the best advice I've ever had. I've heard you talk about this guy, Dave Mills, before. I've heard you say, you know, he was a great coach for you during your, your collegiate wrestling days. And I think you had, had thought about bringing him in before, but this is the first time, correct? I've always had coach here. Yeah. So with UFC 209, we were there, and uh, that's when Khabib ran away. So I, I actually brought one of my buddies, Jeremiah Vance, too. And uh, we prepared really well for that fight, you know. And what we did was I practiced on a 10 by 10 boxing ring. So it didn't matter where we were going to be at. You know, I have my academy, which is nice. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's awesome space. But utilizing that space and not being able to hone it in on a small space, to be able to go out there in that big octagon and be able to do that at that grand level was a completely different factor. So I had to bring in people that I knew I could trust and structure everything what I had, which, was, which needed structure. I had all the talent. I have all the gumption. I have everything that I can to be able to win. But with all these main ideas, it's hard to write a main topic paper. I'm a, and I like to write. I'm a storyteller. When it goes into it, I like to be able to do this. But the one thing, the one problem I always had was being able to focus the central idea. The central idea is here. UFC 274, come Saturday night, my hands will be raised in victory. Last thing I'll ask you, man, and um, I, this won't come as a surprise to you. You know what, what people say. They, they, say. they look at this as a crossroads fight for you. They're like, this is a big crossroads fight for Tony. That's because they've never competed in their life. That's because they've never been at this level. That's because you have people asking stupid questions like that that have never been to the top and lost and had to wrestle back in the consolation rounds. I can be on, I can say everything I want and be pissed off at the world, but that doesn't get anything done. You utilize that energy and what I'm here is just to kind of represent myself and then see if anybody else wants to follow my footsteps. It's not to follow my footsteps, but to kind of be like that and to not quit and to be able to fight through these things, I guess you would call it, and to be able to make sure that you're going to always be all right and come out on top with your hand raised. It's a lot bigger than me, man. It's a lot bigger than the UFC, what I fight for. So once you guys get that through your heads, then you guys know that there is no crossroads except for just one. One more thing, actually. Are you looking forward to Saturday? Do you, you like that, that sense of competition and the fans will be there? Like that, you getting in there and it's just you and another man. Like, like that, that part of it. You still love it? Like how do you feel about that part of it? I'm going to go in there and I'm going to do what I do best, which is compete. I'm going to be the first one out there on my foot on the line like in wrestling match. I'll shake my opponent's hand beforehand. I'll look at him in the eyes. I don't want to hurt this guy, but I'm going to go out there and I'm going to hurt this this is a hurt fight game. And I got all the, all the things that I really need. I got blades and shades, you know, all day, which I'm going to bring in there. And this kid doesn't like to be cut. So I'm going to go in there. I'm going to test his will. I'm going to break him. I've seen him break before. I know exactly where he's going to be. I know where he's going to be standing, where I'm going to hit him. And I'm going to take his ass down, and I'm going to finish him. I love it, man. Thank you so much for the time. Best Pleasure. of luck. Thank you. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.